In higher level competitions, a shot clock is often used. What this means is that the offensive team has 24 seconds in which to attempt a shot, and if they don't, the other team automatically get the ball. The shot clock is a separate clock to the scoreboard and will either be on the backboard or perhaps on the back wall. The shot clock is not started until a team gets possession or control of the ball. If we watch this jump ball, the clock does not start until number 12 has control. So there's a couple of seconds where the shot clock is not running. This is quite common. Again, until 44 caught the ball, the shot clock did not start. After a basket is scored, the shot clock resets to 24 seconds because the new team will have that time in which to make an attempt to score. We watch here, as the shot goes in, the shot clock on the backboard resets. However, it does not start again until number nine has caught the ball. If you are operating the shot clock, the most important thing to remember is that any time a referee blows their whistle, stop the shot clock. If the same team is to get the ball, then the shot clock will not reset. The first example was when the defense knocks it out. Here it's a held ball, but Green gets the ball back because they have the possession arrow. Here we have an example where a double foul has been called. The same team will get the ball back. If there are less than 24 seconds left, then the shot clock should be reset and not run. You reset the shot clock, which means it goes back to 24 seconds, at times when the referee tells you to. Here the ball came on the court and you can see the referee gives a signal twirling their finger in the air. This is your sign that the shot clock should be reset. Another example is if the ball is deliberately kicked. Again, we can see the referee give the reset sign on this slow motion video. There's the sign for you to reset the shot clock back to 24 seconds. Once a shot is taken, you reset the shot clock. It should be reset as the ball hits the ring, but you don't start it running until a team has control of the ball. Here is an example where the rebound is contested. You can see the shot clock was at 22. An error must have occurred here. It should have still been at 24 because the shot was taken straight away. On a turnover or change of control, the shot clock resets. On a foul, the shot clock also resets. You should stop it when the umpire's whistle blows and then reset it when they indicate there's a foul. Similarly, if there is a violation and the other team gets the ball, the shot clock resets. A couple of situations that might occur with the shot clock that we should look at. Here you see a number of shots being taken, but the ball is not hitting the ring, so the shot clock should not be reset. In this example, the shot clock goes off while the shot is in the air. However, it then hit the ring, so it is play on. The clock should be reset as soon as it hits the ring. In this example, the shot clock was not reset to 24 when it should have been, and then goes off during play. If this occurs, simply tell the referee that there was an error and they will have the shot clock reset. Here, the offense shoots, the shot clock expires, but the defense gets immediate control of the ball, so it is play on. At under 14 level, there is a variation of the shot clock. The 24 second count does not start until the ball is in the front court, which is the end of the court the team is trying to score. This gives the younger players longer to try and attempt a shot. It's not in the front court until both the ball and both feet have touched the front court. So here you see that 44 stepped across and then back, but the clock did not start until he was fully in. If it's a pass, it starts as soon as it's caught in the front court. 